So welcome to Nicole McMahon and Joe Rienzi, our uh, school resource officers in Needham. And also, of course, welcome to Rocket. Rocket, I think you should turn around for the cameras, but we'll, we'll get it right. Uh, uh, thank you both for being here. Um, you know, I want to get right into it and, you know, first of all, say that school safety and student wellness and staff wellness and their safety is really a priority for all of us and, and certainly for me. And the school resource officers play such a huge role in keeping us safe and working with us. Nicole, can you really share with us what what is the role of a school resource officer? Yeah, so I would say our role is really to um, work with school administrators and maintain um, and establish um, a safe environment for all the students, the staff, and the faculty. Um, we also are responsible for responding to all emergencies at the schools. We're responsible for investigating crimes. And we also, um, we wear a lot of hats. So not only are we investigating crimes um, and responding to emergencies, we also act as mentors and counselors for the kids too and try to create um, a positive image for law enforcement. And I would imagine that uh, there's probably more of providing some guidance and mentoring and conversations than there is a lot of crime fighting in the schools, Correct. although there are some incidents that you do have to investigate and follow up on, for sure. Correct. But I would say the majority is yeah. uh, being a positive role model. So now how, how, is, it, how is the work divided? You're both, you both will respond pre-K through 12 to any need, and this includes at St. Joe's as well in the schools, uh, are you focused mostly where? So I am focused mostly on uh, the middle schools and then the elementary schools. Okay, and Joe? Focused primarily in the high school. In the high school. So, Joe, what's a typical day for, for you and for a school resource officer? What, is it, what does that look like? Um, so I come in in the morning, we read the logs, see if there's anything that happened the night before that might involve juveniles that we would follow up with during the day. Um, or make sure that if something did happen, we could get them counseling through the school. After that, I pick up Rocket um, at the school, and at that point, check in with the high school, make sure everything's going okay, and then every day is kind of different. Some days, I'll pick him up and we'll go right to Pollard and visit some classrooms. We might go to Sunita Williams. Um, this morning, we were at St. Joe's. So every day is a little bit different kind of after I pick him up because we can bounce to any school we'd like unless there's a specific school that's requested us to come by and say hi. And that, that has a need. Nicole, would you say the same? Uh, what, what does that routine look like for you? Yeah, the same. Um, a lot of time, we do have some downtime, but just being visible in the schools is important. Um, we do have kids and teachers come um, up to us. Sometimes we'll do interviews for classrooms. I did one for a culture class at Pollard and that was great because they just wanted to know my background, my upbringing, and then how it is um, being an officer in this culture at these times. Other times we might have some events that we go to. Um, we try to be present at all of the events for the schools and supportive. And then sometimes administrators might just have a question and it's easy enough to answer that for them. Right. Well, you are in a lot of student activities and in hockey games and football games and on uh, early release days, you're all over town, but you're you're a big presence in the schools at the different events, and and much uh, uh, really much appreciated. Um, you also, if I'm not mistaken, you you will also uh, go into class as a guest lecturer. Besides working with principals on lockdown drills, um, because we do have lockdown drills in the schools, and I know you both play a key role along with other public safety officials in that. You're also in classes to help with uh, teaching about the uh, um, Fourth Amendment. And so what does that look like? Yeah, so we'll just teach them. Um, we'll and teach, this is at Pollard? Yep, so this will be eighth grade at Pollard. We'll go right. into um, their class, teach them about the Fourth Amendment, answer any questions they have, say, around like search and seizures or probable cause versus reasonable suspicion. Um, it's more like an open discussion, and then they can kind of um, learn more about the law in our side of things when we do um, patrol out on the streets. And also uh, there are opportunities, Joe, I know at the high school um, to you know, stop into classes and, and uh, have students interview you or, or talk to you about different uh, some of the topics of the day. Or Yeah, one of the girls actually right before this was asking um, for me to do a letter of recommendation because she's been interested in things when it comes to investigative the investigative side of policing and how they actually solve crimes and 
through DNA and fingerprinting and things like that. So it's good that kids that are heading off to college in their next couple of years, they're starting to think about these things. And then they come to me and ask like, Hey, how do you, how do you go through the process of being a police officer? Or, um, I want to do something with analysis or, um, fingerprinting things of that nature rather than just being a police officer. So, um, we kind of explain to them different avenues they can go about in order to do some type of internship and eventually hopefully get a job. I, I, I love the idea that students, well, this happens, I see this all the time, will approach you, which I think is part of the role and the relationships you're developing to, uh, to be able to be in school, be present, and have students approach you with questions like that. What is it like to be a police officer? And you were talking recently in classroom about you know, culture and, and what it's like. I, I guess for both of you, it, Policing is is a uh, it's a tough job. It's certainly been in the news, and uh, you know tragically with uh, with uh, some incidents, uh, certainly not in Needham, where police officers have, have been under under target for for incidents that have occurred. What what do you say to students when when they ask what's it like now, or is this a profession I want to get into? Yeah, so we tell it's difficult, of course. Um, we're always trying to promote a positive image. Um, but you just kind of have to keep your head up, know you're doing the right thing, do the right thing, just be there for the community and the schools, um, and just continue on. I mean, we try not to listen to all the news all the yeah. time and block it out. Um, and I think here in Needham, I know myself and Joe have a great rapport with all the students. Um, we do with the parents too. And it's nice not even working in the schools, but even if we're on patrol or outside of school, um, we still have those parents or kids approach us because they recognize us, and that's important too. They're not afraid to ask for help, ask for a question. We might even go meet them for lunch if we have time, but it's just important uh, keeping those relationships strong. I think that's a key part, that relationship, your presence, your approachable kids and families. Now, I would imagine you also are not only just working with the schools, but sometimes they're families you have to you reach out to. Um, whether it's a Boston family or a Needham family to, to help uh, help get resources because there are students in need and you can connect them with the right agencies um, or if there is a student perhaps who, who has uh, uh, an issue you can uh, work with that student to get the student in a diversion program. Um, I know that you've done some of that up at uh, the high school. A lot of the work that you do in the schools is within the structure of the uh, memorandum of understanding that the police chief and I have established to outline responsibilities that you have in the schools, that, that we have in the schools. Um, and sometimes I, I know it, 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 it can be tricky because you are not disciplinarians. That's up to the, the schools. And the schools have to remember they're, they're not you know, the law and, and, and the police. And so we do have different responsibilities. How do you balance that? Uh, what, is that what does that look like? How do, you, how do you try to navigate you know, what you will do in a school or, or not? Just uh, communication's our big thing. So no matter what, any time of day, the principal, the assistant principals, they can always call me on the phone, even if it's something that they're 99% sure it's not law related. Just the ability to call me quickly, shoot me a text, hey, do you have a minute? just so they can reassure themselves like, hey, I don't need to get the SRO involved. Um, as long as we have that open line of communication, um, it, it's great. It's, it's easy to talk to them. They are very approachable, and obviously I'm approachable. I'm not afraid to, even if I'm off duty, if they got a quick question just to bounce an idea off of, or they got an email late at night and they're unsure how to handle it, um, just because they're getting me or Nicole involved, it doesn't mean that it's this big dramatic thing that we're doing. It's, hey, I got a question for you. We'll give you a little guidance, and that might be it. Like, there's no, just because they're telling us something, it doesn't mean we're going to start this big investigation. Right. Well, I think communication is the biggest piece. Actually, that's a, that's a central piece of the mem memorandum of understanding that, you know, we, we have open lines of communication doesn't mean that we always have it right. Sometimes there's a misunderstanding or there's a miscue or, well, there are only two of you and there are eight schools and, mm -hmm. and so communication sometimes can be a challenge. Just before we wrap up, I want to talk a little bit about uh, um, Rocket. You know, we, Rocket is, uh, you know, our third SRO who goes around and checks in with kids. What's a recent example of how Rocket has uh, positively impacted uh, a uh, student or a school? Um, so there was a student at one of the lower schools who was 
having a tough time um, in school and Nicole and I went by the house after school when there's no other kids that may see us visiting where then kids are going to go up to that student and be like, oh, what's going on? Why are the police involved? And it brings this all unnecessary and unneeded attention toward that person. Instead, we can swing by the house, we can coordinate it with the parents, and we bring Rocket in, and that student can just hang out with Rocket for a bit. And um, Instead of making a big deal about it in school, yeah. there can be something a little bit more quiet with the family uh, you know, to show that support for students who are having trouble. Yeah. That's the kind of uh, really amazing work that I know that you do. And I know to, to um, be able to support the work that you're doing both with Rocket and our students, you were both involved in, in meeting regularly with the principals, uh, getting training, anti-bias training through the police department, and uh, learning different ways that you can work with the schools um, to uh, support our families and provide for student safety. Well, Nicole, Joe, Rocket, Thank you for being here today, and um, you look very excited. Uh, Always. And uh, I really appreciate all the work you do. Thank, Thank you. you.